Hi guys, I'm here today to talk about all the books I bought at the recent booktuber meetup. We had a wonderful day, about 20 of us in the end met in London to go book shopping and it was really nice to see lots of people who've come before and catch up with them but we also had a few new faces and it was just really lovely to be able to talk to people in real life um, who've watched you know, and, and loved their videos so it's always a real treat. And what I particularly love about it is I love going book shopping by myself and I love going book shopping with just a couple of friends but to go book shopping with that many people it's just like recommendation central. People are so happy to recommend books to each other, take recommendations, um, and people are like excited together when they find a book they've been looking for or they love the sound of. So it's just a really lovely day and I had a glorious time. So the first bookshop we went in was Gave the Word. I've decided it's my favourite bookshop. I love it. There is books in there that I've heard of, but there's so many books in there I haven't heard of. They have lots of books by indie presses, from the UK and from other countries which you don't often see I don't think in bookshops and um, they also have a, a real mix of types of books they have um, a massive non-fiction section um, a great section of graphic novels a really good um, teen section just a real mix and um, the staff are so friendly so helpful and I just love the vibe and the set out of the shop so I love everything about it and I bought quite a few books from there so I wanted to buy loads of graphic novels but I stopped myself because of the weight of carrying them around London all day. So I bought two in the end that I'd seen Jean talk about and recommend. The first one is Bingo Love. I think this is a standalone graphic novel and this is written by T Franklin, Jensen Ong and Joy San. Um, and this is about two women who um, meet and fall in love at church bingo in 1963 and then they break up and then reunite 50 years later. So we follow their story. This just looks super cutesy and I'm really excited to read it. There's that one. The next one is volume one. So this is gonna be a series and this is Moonstruck by Grace Ellish and Shay Beagle. And it says, it's volume one, it's called Magic to Brew. And um, this is set in a little college town and it follows fantasy creatures who live cozy, normal lives um, right alongside humans and um, they're all like different types of fantastical creatures like werewolves and maybe vampires um i don't know it just looks really cute i love the artwork and i'm super excited to follow these two girls romance so there's that one then i picked up a ya book which i've heard quite a few people say is amazing and um, that's we are okay by nina lacour um i was originally drawn to this when i saw it um because of the cover and then I heard loads of people talk about it in um, review videos and so I had it on my radar as a book I wanted to pick up and um, so when I saw it in there I thought you know what I'm gonna give it a go. So this is following um, a girl called Marin who hasn't spoken to anyone from her old life since the day she left everything behind um, and now a month later she waits in her empty dorm and her old friend is coming to visit and she's going to be forced to like recollect everything that happened. So that's quite a uh, vague plot synopsis but I think this is probably more character driven than um, a lot of sort of popular teen novels and it sounds like one I could really enjoy so I'm excited for this one and I'll probably pick this one up quite soon because it looks like it's going to be quite a quick read. This next one I am so excited about. So I saw the cover because they had this one standing face out. It's called Willow and Hesper by Amy Feltman and I thought that is stunning. I need to read what it's about. And then I opened it and it says it follows a whirlwind romance between two women called Willa and Hesper who meet in Brooklyn um, and it follows their family history um, so one of them goes back to um, Georgia and one of them goes back to um, Pol Poland to look into her um, family's history involved with the Holocaust and it says it's told from alternating perspectives ends in the shadow of Trump's present it's a soul piercing debut that explores the intertwining um, of past and present queerness and coming of age in uncertain times. I love the sound of all of that but at the um, top of the blurb they had a paragraph from the book and it is beautifully written and that is what like just made me be like I don't even care what the reviews are, what people are saying, I'm going to pick this one up. Um, so this only just came out I think a month or so ago um, and it's from a, um, I don't know if they're an indie press but they're a US press um, so I probably won't be able to get hold of this easily here. So I picked it up and I'm hoping to love this one. It has loads of things in it that I really enjoy. It sounds like it's really character focused and the language is beautiful. So there's that. 
Then I saw um, a book facing outwards again um, by this author who is called VG Lee and it was actually um, a different book, a new one that was a short story collection but I decided not to pick that one up because I've been quite bad lately at reading short story collections um, but I did see that she had a few novels on the shelves as well and this was one of them and this is called Always You Edina. So this is one of those covers where I'm like unsure if I love it or really don't like it. I'm bordering on thinking I love it. It's really strong, it's quite different. But yeah, unsure. Let me know your thoughts. So this is by um, Indie Press in the UK. Um, and this is um, set in 1960s Birmingham and it follows a young girl's coming of age story. Um, and it's very much focused on her aunt, Adina, and her um, father and one of his friends and their relationships. And it says, um, it comprehends the tragic repercussions um, their relationship will have on the families. So I, I think there's going to be a gay romance and I'm not sure if that's going to be with the father and his friend or something to do with the aunt but it sounds like this is going to be a real beautiful coming of age family story and as I've said before I'm really looking out for stories that are set in parts of England other than London. Um, I think it's quite rare to find a story that's set in Birmingham so I'm excited for this one. This next one is the last one I picked up there and to be honest I was at the till and then I saw this glorious cover out the corner of my eye um, and this is Fierce Femmes and Notorious Liars A Dangerous Trans Girls and Fabulous Memoir by Kai Cheng Tom. So I'm still not quite sure if this is a memoir or a novel. I think from what I've read of it that it's a um, YA novel that's sort of written like a, a guide to living um, so I think it's going to be quite bizarre but it says it follows a haunted young girl who runs away from a repressive city in search of love and sisterhood and finds herself in a magical place known only as the Street of Miracles. She's quickly adopted into a vigilante gang of glamorous warrior femmes called the Lipstick Lacerators. So yeah. Sounds like it's going to be pretty wacky, but I couldn't not buy it once I saw that cover and that title. So I'll report back on this one. So when I went into the day, my plans were to buy books about witches. And that's because I'd recently read The Burning by Laura Bates and really enjoyed it. And that has a witchy element, which I loved and reminded me of how many books I read about witches in my childhood and teen years and how I haven't read as many as an adult. And mainly that's because the type of witch books I want, I think, are really hard to find. So feel free to give me recommendations now. The type of witch books I'm looking for are li like literary books. I don't mind if they're historical or contemporary, although I do really like the idea of contemporary books about witches. But I'm not looking for books like A Discovery of Witches with loads of romance that are like really page turny and adventure driven. I'm not looking for books like... Um, where a witch also runs a tea shop. What I want is like dark literary witch books that have a commentary on um, sexism and um, the awful things that were done to witches and the relation to like feminism and witchcraft. That is the sort of book I'm looking for, feel free to recommend. So one I'd heard of um, and the lovely Harriet saw it in London Review Bookshop and pointed it out to me is Colour by Laura Legg. So this recently came out I think last month and this sounds like precisely the sort of witch book I want to read. And this is set in a small village in the Outer Hebrides where there is a school and a fire station. And there is also a stone farmhouse known by the four women who live there as Carla which means Haven. And these four women are witches. So I think this must be set in somewhat contemporary times because there's a fire station. But it says that one of the sisters is tired of the sort of arbitrary rules that are placed on them. So she starts to um, cause fracture in the group of these four women. It says, it's a brilliant coming of age story, which I love. There's four female characters. It's set on a Scottish island and they're freaking witches. So I've read the reviews before I bought this. And lots of people were saying they didn't enjoy it because there isn't much plot. It's really, really um, descriptive and lyrical. But... I don't mind not much plot as long as there's character development and amazing writing and the sections I read were so beautiful like the descriptions of them like sitting at the table and telling you what they're wearing and what they're eating it's so fantastically gothic and magical I can't even so <laughs> there's that one so then we went in Forbidden Planet where I was on the lookout for witch books and people were trying to help me like find some 
you'd think there'd be loads it's a fantasy and sci-fi shop but they do categorize like by like the alphabet system i wish they would categorize by theme like werewolves witches fairies that would be good but i guess they've decided not to so instead of finding witch books i found um another sort of um, subset of books which I love and I bought two of those um so this one is the amateurs by Liz Harmer so this is a sort of post-apocalyptic literary um novel and it sounds amazing and I don't think I'd heard of this one so it says in a time and place only slightly removed from now Peanut the world's largest tech company has introduced to society a new product called Port and basically the pool is a, a system that allows you to um, go back into it and like live in like nostalgia um, and it says that because nostalgia is like one of the strongest emotions lots of people go into this system and don't come back um, and they're not sure whether it's through choice or design um, so it says in the amateurs Liz Harmer has created a subtle many faceted debut novel about rapture and romance and the strange dark powerful alchemy that happens when technology meets desire so I love the sound of this one and I'm always on the lookout for post-apocalyptic novels that are less action focused and more character focused and this sounds like it will be that and then the next one is The Migration by Helen Marshall. So Victoria from the amazing channel Eve's Alexandria came and she recommended this one to me and I really trust her with these sort of books because um, she reads quite a few um, sort of literary post-apocalyptic novels um, and gives amazing recommendations and she said this one was really amazing and it sounds phenomenal. So it says storms and flooding are worsening around the world and a mysterious immune disorder has begun to afflict the young. So we're following um, Sophie, who's about to begin her senior year of high school when her little sister is diagnosed. Um, so we follow this family who are working um, in a centre trying to help people with this illness. And um, it follows their story as the younger sister succumbs. When I read the opening page, it's like beautiful. It starts with describing animals which we know as really common um, now as though they're something we've never heard of, like the dodo. Um, and it was just beautifully, beautifully written and really slow and so I bought it and very intrigued to read this one. So the last books I bought on the day were from a shop called Any Amount of Books which is a secondhand shop that has loads of new releases in there. I think they must be given to the shop by people who get sent loads of like advanced readers copies and things like that. So this first one is The Cold Is In Her Bones by Peter Nell Van Arsdale. To be honest I love the cover. This is a um, YA book and recently I've been more um, willing to give YA a go and I'm just trying to find the ones that are like more for me. Um, so this sounds like a um, fantasy YA and it follows a girl who um, works on her family's farm and there is a demon who um, possesses girls in the village at random and the demon has come for our main character Iris and it follows her story and I think her brother is trying to help her escape so yeah not really sure what to expect about the writing but this was only like two pounds so i thought you know i can risk giving it a go and if i don't like it i can give it to a charity shop again so there's that one this next one i was really excited to see because it's one of my most anticipated releases and it's the fire starters by jan carson it is a little bit crumpled but i don't mind because i think i paid like two pounds for it so jan carson is an author who i've been interested in reading for quite a few years but this is her first book published in the UK, I think. Um, so yeah, I haven't been able to get hold of her books easily before. I'm not quite sure what this is about, but very briefly, it says that it follows two fathers who are trying to look after their children um, when a large fire is lit in Belfast and um, there's a blend of like magic and reality um, and this sort of goes into fantasy a little bit, I think. So yeah, I just basically want to read this author's work. So I thought I'd give her newest book a go. And then the last book I picked up in there I was so happy to see because I'd thought about buying it earlier in the day when I saw it full price somewhere but I'd stopped myself because I have a lot of um, nature non-fiction books that I haven't read and I was like I'm not gonna let myself buy another one and then I saw this as an advanced reader's copy for a pound so I thought you know it's meant to be. Um, and this is Out of the Woods by Luke Turner. So it says that since his childhood he's been battling lots of demons to do with his um, religious upbringing and um, lots of sexual abuse and also his bisexuality and after a significant relationship ends um, he sort of starts to go into free fall and so he decides to take himself off to um, Epping Forest and sort of um, 
get himself into nature and sort of escape from um, his everyday sort of structured life to see if that helps and this is an exploration of of that forest and how it makes him feel so I'm hoping this will be um, really beautiful I've been getting rave reviews from lots of other nature writers and um, I love any books that are set in forests so there you go there's that one and then right at the end of the day we were sitting in foils having um, a cup of tea and I needed to run off so I didn't really have time to buy any more books um, and I decided I'd failed quite spectacularly at buying witch books so I decided to um, go online and just order a few because by this point my bags were ridiculously full I couldn't possibly carry any more books so I ordered a few and I'm just going to talk about them now they, they haven't arrived yet but I thought I'll put all the witch books in one video. So the first one is a non-fiction book it came out last year and I got it out from the library and, and sort of ran out of time to read it and um, it's called The Witch A History of Fear from Ancient Times to the Present and it's by Ronald Hutton. I heard really great things about it it's got really high ratings and the reviews were really positive and um, and what I heard was that lots of books that write about witches really focus on the Salem witch trials and this one doesn't and um, it's much more broad in scope and I think has quite a strong focus on um, Britain and what happened to witches here and um, so I'm really interested in this one and I'm hoping it will give me a good grounding for like understanding um, more of the nuances in novels that have witches in. Another book I picked up is called Witch Light by Susan Fletcher. My understanding is that Susan Fletcher writes quite a lot of books about witches, I think they're all historical um, and so I decided to give one of them a go. So this is set in 1692 I think in the Scottish Highlands and it follows a girl called Corag who's been imprisoned for being a witch um, but she was actually a witness to the massacre at Glencoe and so someone sent to interview her and um, it's sort of where that relationship goes and um, you know following her persecution so yeah I love the sound of this one I'm hoping I'll really enjoy it because then she has a few others and I can go and read more books about witches the last one I've pre-ordered because it's not actually out yet it comes out in a few days and it's called Wakenhurst by Michelle Paver so Michelle Paver is quite well known for writing sort of literary horror novels I haven't read any of them but I do really love the sound of them and basically I saw Victoria from Eve's Alexandria buying a copy of this and I um, asked to have a look at it and read the blurb and I saw three words which made me desperately need it. One of those was witches, one of those was Suffolk which is where I'm from and one of those was gothic and I was like yep yeah, I need this book so I've pre-ordered it. That's all I know. <laughs> um, but it says it's um, sort of historical fiction um, for fans of um, Sarah Perry and yeah there it's set on the fens in this old house and people think there might be um, a witch um, taking over um, sort of in the area and this sort of um, scary force so yeah love the sound of it I don't know how scary it's going to be I don't really read scary books but I'm sure I'll be fine so yeah those are all the books I've picked up in the last few days do let me know if you have any witch book recommendations because I need loads more and also let me know if you've read any of these um, what your thoughts are on them and also let me know what books you're excited about reading and you've picked up recently thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video bye